Well, the copper I've just stripped out, Ben was going to leave up here. What have you got to say about that? Uh, it's just lazy these days, I'm, I'm afraid. Instead of calling you the posh plumber, I'm going to have to stop calling you the rich plumber. <laughs> yeah, because that was true. If, like, obviously I did my apprenticeship with my dad. If there was a bag of scrap copper in a burning building and me, he would save the copper first. What's up guys, happy Sunday. Thanks for tuning in to my latest video, The Life of a Jobbing Plumber. I'm pre-recording this van intro. If everything's gone to plan, it's going out on Sunday night and I have just finished the Istanbul Marathon. So hopefully my knees aren't feeling too bad. Um, got a mixed bag of jobs for you this week. Hopefully you enjoy the video. As always, we're sponsored by Velocity Pro Gear Tool Bags and Power Tool Mate. I'll leave the links to both their sites in the description. I hope you enjoy the video. Have a great weekend, what's left of it, and I'll see you next Sunday. Cheers, guys. So that is their flow rate on the hot, full, out of the bathtub. Even worse out of the basin tub. Tanks, literally, there's the ceiling, and they're in the ceiling above because we're in a bungalow. This is the hot water cylinder, we're in a bungalow, so we've got the tanks above here. So, obviously, we've not got much head, which is why the performance of the taps is so bad. So, this is coming out, putting an unvented cylinder, which will give us mains pressure hot water, which will be a massive improvement on what they've got. So first thing we've done, we've drained the water out the cylinder, um, opened the taps, the shower, that shower pump, that's all dead. So we're going to strip this out. Before we do that, we're labelling what pipes we know are what. So we've got return from the cylinder, that's the central heating flow, because the boiler is other end of the house. So yeah, we'll label all these up, and then we can cut this out and then see what we've got in here. So the stage right now, everything's drained down, heating's drained down, hot water's drained down. We've identified the pipes we need to keep. Uh, so they're the feeds for the shower, flow, return, central heating flow, hot, cold, in. Um, so Ben's just been cutting out the pipe work. And this was the cold feed. So the combined vent and overflow into the heating system and it was only soldered in by about four mil. And it just pulled apart, literally fell apart. How has that been in there all these years? It's not even soldered properly. If your me did that, it flooded the place. So yeah, the plan is get everything stripped out, boiler out next, and then we're gonna get the boiler on and connected and then we're going to get the cylinder cover done and connected and then we're going to flush the system. Should be a nice little job. Okay. So, not that one, that one. so this pump I fitted about 12 months ago. That old one that came out was really clogged in pedals, full of crap. So tank fed system had a combined feed and vent and we were struggling with circulation problems. So I thought whilst we've got it, I'll have a quick look inside and just see what over 12 months has actually happened. The thing with um, open vented systems is they're more susceptible to corrosion because there's obviously oxygen in the water. So that's why when pressure systems are introduced, they're so much better. Unless you're filling them up all the time. Well, yeah. Air's the worst thing for a heating system. Open like a chocolate orange. <laughs> That's not good, is it? Not too bad. Not 
Too bad. Put it back together now. We use it. Yeah, <laughs> my dad would use that on another job. Keep it as a spare. So just offer this cylinder in to see, make a sort of plan about the pipes. And the first thing I've noticed, which I'm not too keen on, is essentially in flow. Obviously the natural thing is to come straight out, but it hits that. And if you run it in front of that, you can't get that off. So that's a bit of shit. The actual flow from the boiler goes onto this pipe here, which if you connect on and come straight down, hits that drain cock. So that's a bit shit. Um, yeah, not a massive, uh, not a massive fan so far. I'm sure we'll work it out. Cart flow. So obviously the boiler's there. The gas is. That's the bottom cover off the boiler. No cracks either side and the screw flap still works. That is like rocking all shit. 10 years ago, I could have done with a few of these. Not so much these days, because most of these boilers come out now, but had so many where they needed these replacing. What a find. These boilers are quite heavy anyway, so getting as much water out as possible makes it easy to come off the wall and straighten out into the bucket. So the flue's held in, there's four nuts there, eight mil socket on this extension bar is really handy because if you want to get in there with uh, anything where your hand gets in, you rip it on these, they're really sharp. So luckily all four of these squeaky but come off so it's a little knot there so now if we bang the cement out from around the flue that will uh, the flue will come out if you want to know what set that was it's the Weira Ziklop one of the first sets I've got I've got the smaller quarter inch drive but this is the 3 8 drive so it's got the bigger head but you get 8 mil through to 19 mil you also get these bits because there's a bit adapter there if you want to put a bit in it it's good because you get the extension bar because you've got the long one and the shorter one. Um, but yeah, that's one probably one of the longest the sets I've owned the longest, is what I'm trying to say. And they fold up nicely. The the smaller one, the quarter inch drive, I use even more. That's in my servicing bag though. I'll stand on that. So before you take your boiler off, if you want to determine which pipes you flow and return, a lot of the time the boiler will have printed on top of NF and an R, but this one's not. So if you look Inside, where it goes into the heat exchanger, the pipe that's got a stat on it, any kind of temperature stat, is your flow. So for this one, our flow is the left and returns on the right. I always feel better when things are tidy. So I've just um, cut all the cardboard up, put it in there, cut all the copper, just put it in a pile. They're my hoses, nicely tied up. That's how Ben keeps his hoses. I don't know how, you must be mental to keep your hose like that, but that's how he does it. If you ever go to a trade show, go to the Butte Line stand and they sell these Velcro straps. Well, they don't sell them, they give them away on the stand. So if you go to install a show or any of the Fexes this year, go to Butte Line and get some of them straps because they're great for keeping your hoses tidy and then you don't have to keep them like Mr. Tickle. So we've got the boiler hung on the wall, flue's done, because obviously the boiler's not moving anywhere. Now we're deciding what to do with the pipe work. So that 15 mil T there was the old gas feed to the boiler. So we don't need that anymore. So I'm cutting the gas there and I'm cutting it there. So we'll renew this bit, which with an elbow and a socket. And then uh, 15 centre T we're gonna face down, come across and connect on that side, so gas inlet to the boiler. So do that first. Then we're gonna get the laser on the wall get some clips on to, to pick up the flow and return. This is what we're doing with the gas. There was no clips on that pipe. So we're using the laser, you can see there, coming straight down the center of the pipe, straight into that um, new press fitting. So we're just gonna put a couple of clips on the wall before we finish off. And then we'll move on to the pipe work. Why don't you just 
Right, out. yellow's pump live. Earth. White is the boiler switch live, and the neutral and permanent live, blue and brown. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take the um, flow up the hole that the old cable's coming down. So we've just labelled what wire did, did what. Yellow was the pump live, white was the switch live to the boiler, live neutral earth. Pull that up and bring it down this this hole here and then the electrician can trunk it and put it into a spare or whatever he's got to do and we can use that hole for our pipes and then the next one will be next along then I'm going to crawl up in the roof poke the new two pieces of copper up cut these and then connect them on above ceiling height like that so there's the two clips so get a bit of copper into there it's going to dog leg in front of the gas to come along and up because the gas pipe here is in the way as well so we're just going to come in front of it to make it life easier a bit of old school tightness testing Obviously we did one before we started and then we've just finished the gas pipe so we're doing another one then we can light all their gas hob rings to keep warm <laughs> so that's off flow it's just kicking out dog legged in front of the gas and then i've got the laser now on level with this pipe now this pipe's staying because this is our return the flow because it had to cross i thought we'd just do it in the ceiling above because it'll look better so the return's going to come down now we've got the um air separator to go on the flow and the dirt separator to go on the return so i've got to cut them in and because we're in a garage we've got to lag the pipes so i'm leaving room um obviously the gas isn't being lagged which is the far right pipe so the flow next to it can be lagged there's room there and i'm keeping this one where it is so then i've got room between the two to lag it probably going to put the magnetic filter level sort of the flue height and then see if i've got room to get the air separator next to it so what we've got here is a is a worcester offset for uh the standard flue and you can either use, well you could use it on a vertical flue which allows you to rotate it to go through an existing hole or if you're going side exit on the flue you can actually put it into the standard elbow which offsets you and it's supposed to um, replace where the standard flue would be on a uh, an SI boiler where it would be offset compared to the 4000. Uh, cool. Quite clever, 20 quid. Uh, only thing is you lose four meters of flue length. Oh dear. So if you're going out you have to, if you're going vertical you have to bear in mind that that will take apparently according to their website four meters off. Because ages ago, Baxi changed one from the 80E and 105E when they bought the Duotech out with the um, offset flue. These would have been awesome. Because you used to have to buy 40, two 45s. Cool. Yeah. Plastic. Plastic. So for our Spirotop air bottles, we've got these jackets so it sits inside there it's like pre-cut out and then when you put this together it encapsulates that it's like a lagging jacket it's pretty smart and that matches the one that we're going to be fitting on the rv2 air separator right so that's the original pipe that's why there's a socket there I've put the isolator, so basically we can isolate the return and isolate the return on the boiler when we need to do any work on that filter, so that's that. Now I did have the air separator next to it, but I forgot that we're putting these jackets on. So this insulation jacket goes round our air separator, sort of encapsulates it like that. And then on the back you have this, and it sort of all joins together. Now there's no room to get that in next to that and we're even going to struggle where i've moved it to to get that in probably end up cutting a bit off the back side of it but just to get this jacket on round it like that there's no way it would have fit in next to next to that so i've moved that down pipe works finished um it's press it's quick gas is done prv's done flow and return is done we've got to lag all this so it's all spaced out so we can get the lagging on um, and then there's just the condense to do, which we'll do last, but not bad for today. So we're going to call it a day now, and then we're going to come back tomorrow 
to get on with the cylinder. Right, so over there in the corner, let's turn the light up a bit. Right, over there in the corner is the pipe work that I've got to alter. And because there's not much for me, I mean, I'm gonna to have to lie on my belly almost to get in there. I don't wanna make more than one trip. So I've got press tool, bit of pipe, some fittings and the cutter. So I only have to make one trip, hopefully. Because no one's been up here for a while, everything's just covered in cobwebs. The only sign of life is an electrician who's left his off cuts. Honestly, they think there's something else, don't they? Heads full of cobwebs and spiders and shit just yeah and then managed to you can see that split the front of my thumb open on a screw that was sticking up so i'm not happy I'm glad it's done though i think yes i put it the right way around i wonder what you're on about then mate <laughs> So yesterday I was in the other roof, cut my thumb open. Today Ben's in this side, cutting his shins open. Do you want to explain to the Posh Plumber fans uh, what you're doing at the minute? Uh, so we're cutting in, we're taking out three um, old tank feeds and, and connecting back up to the mains. One, one was to a shower, one was the old cylinder feed and one we're not sure about yet, but it looks like it goes down to a shower at the far end of the house. So we're gonna leave that one for now, work out, get the water back on, test it all, and then find out what, what that actually does, and then connect it in if necessary. Yeah. So basically, right through there, is the two, there's two tanks, two cold water storage systems joined together, and they feed toilets, uh, baths, shower valves, the old cylinder, We've got basically you look at them see where they went work out what they fed and then reconnect them all to the new cylinder just via like cutting them out so you see that speed fit t there that's going but the 22 mil pipe coming this way is staying so got connected onto that this pipe here this like pipe here is our rising main so that is what we've got to connect to feed our new cylinder and some of the other colds that are up here that need reusing so that's what we're doing at the minute. Now, Ben is very rich and was gonna leave all this copper, all of that copper, but I'm not, I'm tight. So I'm gonna crop, climb in there and cut it all out. So there's like the old vent pipe. That's coming out. We've got some, that's the old vent from the heat into the header tank. And there's all those pipes down there as well that can go. There's just so much copper. So this is all the copper I've just stripped out. Ben was going to leave up here. What <laughs> have you got to say about that? Uh, it's just lazy these days, I'm, I'm afraid. Instead of calling you the posh plumber, I'm going to have to stop calling you the rich plumber. <laughs> yeah, Cause I wish that was true. If, like, obviously I did my apprenticeship with my dad. If there was a bag of scrap copper in a burning building and me, you would save the copper first. <laughs> so, what did we get yesterday for the cylinder and the pipe we ripped out yesterday? 50 quid, uh, 100 quid? 100 quid for a cylinder, one bag of copper and an old cast iron boiler. Boiled <laughs> about six quid. How much reckons here? Probably about 100 quid. Nice. Right, so Ben's just been replacing these old Kalefi air bottles or air bottles with the nice new Spirotech ones that we got them jackets for. So what have you done? Put one on the flow, one on the return. So I've got one on the boiler flow. Yeah. I've got one on the central heating flow. And then this one is a cylinder return from the airing cupboard. So when I took the lagging off, this is why I exposed. But it's obviously had a bit of a leak. Someone's PTFE'd the pipe, rammed it into the fitting and then put a Jubilee clip on it. So on our sealed system, once we'd got pressure up, that's likely to go off like a little rocket. So luckily we spotted it, we'll cut it out and we'll have that nice new one going in there. With some so new what's fittings. that black bit there? Is that rubber? Is that just tape? That's PTFE. PTFE and a Jubilee. What's the black? Is that just the colour of the copper? It looks black to me. Yeah, maybe it is. I'll take it out and have a look. Take that, have a look but that was under the lagging. 
But what else are we going to find? A little not? bit of disaster. <laughs> it would have been, wouldn't it? You just think, makes you wonder though. What else are we going to get in this job? That we can't. We haven't spotted. Yeah. There's so much pipe work up here. I mean, we cut a lot of it out, but there's so much still up here. And there was like 222, 128 mil feed out of the tank that reduced down to 22 and just went off to. We couldn't even work out where it went off to. Um, I don't know but where it goes even now. It came out of the tank. Obviously, we've disconnected the cold mains that filled the tanks. With our mains back on, everything's working. Like all the toilets are working, all the outside taps are working, basins, showers, baths, everything's got cold water to it. But the pipes that came out of that tank tap connector that went to nowhere um still yeah everything's still working so that's weird anyway it's out now the electrician's here now he's sorting out the wiring So it's not my job, so I can't really say, but I would have asked for that to be in trunking. But anyway, so the power's on, so I've just got the boiler in purge mode, just getting some air out of the heat exchanger. Uh, lagging's finished in here, well, a little bit, I uh, just saw I missed that. Lagging's done under the boiler, so there's still the condensed to do, making good of the flu, PRV, Ben's going to get on with that. And I'm going to go and lag the cylinder cupboard. So we've got a circulation shot, a couple of rads right in the far end of the house. So I'm following the pipes along. So this is my flow and return for the heating here. And this is warm here. And we've got, that's the return. Just got a stop end on it. And then the flow here, that goes along to kitchen rads. Again, another stop end. I don't know why. That's the hot and cold for the um, kitchen tap. But the rads that are not getting hot are that way. So I need to go through there. Right, so these two are heating. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can show you. Um, is that eight mil pipe? So the dip below here is a towel radiator in the downstairs toilet. They're both hot. This is the flow because that's red hot and this is the return because it's not as hot so i need to go down there all right so i found this randomly so let me get my foot on there so that eight mil there is the feed to the rad one of the rads that's not getting hot this is hot here it's red hot so this is the return and it's got this pipe on it standing up which is room temperature so i'm guessing there's air trapped in that hopefully that's what's causing it why that's in there i don't know it probably used to go to one of the tanks and got altered um i've just tried to undo it slightly with i've only got one pair of grips up here with me though um ben's just gone to my fetch me another pair so hopefully that's it because i can't see any more air bottles or anything further down <coughs> see when I get this one done. It's when your trousers fall down. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get your legs apart wide enough. All I can see is the grips. I can't actually see anything. <sighs> oh, not the crescents. Oh, the crescent. No, they're, oh, they're the channel, channel locks. locks. Not the channel locks. What have you got down there then? So basically on the return, it looks like an old, the old cold feed from the, one of the tanks. Right. But we had, so they've altered the system at some point and they've just capped it. So there's about three foot of pipe, well, two foot of pipe sticking up in the air. Is it not just the air in there? Yeah, so let me just put the, um, hopefully I can get this on film. I can't see anything further down. So, let's grab that. There we go.
got, I took a bottle trap off, a newish one. Yeah. Is it worth swapping that and putting one back on there? Right, that's all the air out of that. Return now feels like it's getting hot. Flow's red hot. Flow down that eight mil pipe to the rad's red hot. It's suddenly gone then, hasn't it? Hopefully, yeah. Well, when we, we take pressure off when we're flushing, yeah. swap it and put one of those auto air vents back on. Yeah? Yeah, the only thing is I got crawled all the way down here again. So I came from down there to the left, to the end of the plank. Here's my flow and return. It's got some heat there, but this is stone cold. They come along and then that T just there where that socket is goes down to eight mil. Um, and they go all the way into the corner there. This one and this one, sorry, this one and this one are both stone cold. So, Maybe there's a blockage on that elbow. Um, so I'm going to start tapping that, see if that's it. We are going to flush it though, so could be that elbow. Could be that T. But check this out. So we just saw mouse droppings. And then this is a little mouse bedroom. It's got some shredded up paper, a bit of string. Bless him. Unfortunately, he's uh, brown bread. There's his little skeleton. I'll use this for a while, Pipe Lagger Pro to do my lagging. So that's all done now. And jackets are lovely, aren't they? So I'm going to go in and do the airing cupboard. I've been at San Diego College, JTL Training Academy this morning, uh, talking to the students, doing some pipe bending stuff. While I was there, Ben's done the pipe work for the cylinder. So that's all done. The electrician's been wired in, the immersion, uh, the, what's it called, the control, uh, the hive. Uh, had a bit of a leak there on that connection. Because it's pre-plumbed, you tend to, you have a full set of security, you don't check the stuff that's come pre-assembled and it was leaked on one of the pre-assembled connections. So uh, yeah, it's all wired up, it's filled up, it's working. So uh, I'm gonna lag this now. Right, so this pipe that I got, I've already cut the point on this piece, so now I need a T there, and I also need a T there. So my first T I've already cut out there. And then my second T, I've marked it where I want it, and I've just got to cut that bit out. So with my machete, just gonna, with one hand again, as I always do, cut there, and there. Piece comes out. Um, I just need to do the measurement from here to here. So that's cut now. So I pull that out of the pipe like pro. And then this should. So push that on there. There, so that's our first T. Like that when it's finished. And then further down here. Right, what I need to do there is just cut a slit there. Which I'm not going to do. Okay, this goes around here like that. Okay, so now I need a piece in there for that T to come this way. That's that T, just needs a bit of tweaking. It's just sticking on this clip. So I'll cut a bit of that out. Um, so that's that lined up. Yeah. That's the best I could do with that. It's so small. Um, really it wants like pinning or taping together. But because there's nothing really there for me to get onto. Hate lagging. So I'm just tidying up up here. Obviously, we've had some of this 
uh, insulation up and some of the pipe lagging off. There's the new uh, spire vents that we fitted with their nice little jackets on. Uh, yeah, so there's quite a lot to, to sort out here. Right, pretty much done. I'm so itchy, coughing. Just want to say something. Motabo, I love my Motabo gear and this light, I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. I can't show you the uh, front of it because it'll blind you. It's really powerful. So it lights up the whole deck. It's got a USB charger on it. But every time I've tried to move this light by grabbing the handle, I've hit the power button and turned it off. And it's doing my head in. It's like every time I grab it, you think, I, I, honestly, when I quit this trade, I'm gonna work as a product designer or a tool designer because that is just so frustrating. I've been swearing at it. You have to hold it down to turn it on, but you turn it off just with a little touch like that and it just does it when you pick it up to move it anyway ran over the um battery the store wasn't it like that so when i got it i thought it was really good but as i started to use it ah uh, as i've started to use it i've realized it's not the best designed thing like the hoover i got the hoover i hate it just because the way it's designed um but anyway, yeah, I'm done with him going down now, cup of tea. Brand new Honeywell valve, dog shit. Can we just change the synchro? Yeah. I'll bring a, I'll, I'll bring a, I'll do it. No, I'll bring a new synchro tomorrow. And we'll, we'll swap the synchro on it. What a load of shit. It looks like it's had a whack. See? I've been whacking it trying to get stop making a noise. Oh, is that what it, that was? <laughs> it? Yeah, I've been beating the shit out of it. Oh, what the fuck's that? That is lubrifiant multi usages. <laughs> yeah. Pre auto <laughs> protection <laughs> and tree wool. Don't know where I got it from. French though. It smells French. Right, we're done. Um, obviously, shame about that cable, but it is what it is. So the two radiators that weren't circulating, we got them working when we did the flush, um, just blasted the thorough flush through it and that managed to clear it. We were a bit behind schedule, what time is it now? It is just coming up to six o'clock and we're done. So um, the thing that made this job a bit, took us a bit longer was we both had like Monday, I was at the college. Um, yesterday we both went to other jobs. Today Ben went to another job. I went to do a gas certificate before I came here. So we've not done um, three, four days here, but yeah. I'll show you the uh, cylinder. Oh, that's the lagging done. Um, those two pipes there, which is the central heat flow on the right and the return in the middle, just didn't have enough lagging to finish it, but it don't look too bad. I've, I've worked out the thing with pipe lagging is, it's like jet washing a drive. When you do the first slab, it's fun, like you enjoy it, but then when you realize you've got 100 slabs to do, you just hate it. And I'm the same with lagging, I thought, oh, I can make this look really nice. And then I lost interest pretty much straight away. But, I mean, that looks nice, the tea looks nice, don't it? I don't even know if it's worth showing you this, but just the life of a plumber. So I got a call, I was at the gym, it was about seven o'clock at night, customer tried to bleed his radiators. One of them's now leaking. It was this uh, bleed valve. It just wasn't, it just kept turning basically. So you couldn't stop it from leaking. So I said I'd pop in on my way home. And this is why I wanted to show you it, my stuff box. Now I've obviously put that in because I knew that was what I needed, but I keep, if I ever take an old radiator out, I'll take the air pep out or the pip, whatever you call it, because they're useful if a customer loses one, or if you're ever bleeding a rad and one drops under a floorboard or something, but these, if you, um, next time you're in your merchants, if you've got a good relationship with your merchants, ask them if they've got any knocking around from like damaged rads or anything. Or I think you can buy them as spares now, but basically took the old one out, put the new one in, tightened it in, and that's the job done. Um, this was the pair of grips that he was trying to use to take it out. Look at the size of them, they're massive. But yeah, just goes to show the importance of having a little stuff box because you never know when you're going to need something like that to fix 
an easy job like this. All right, I know not all of you are going to be interested in this, so if you're only here for the plumbing, just end the video now. If you are interested, here's my medals from my marathon. So this is my first one I got. This is from London, and that is a beautiful medal. You've got all the landmarks around there, and then it just says 2022 on this side. Really nice medal, that. Wasn't my favourite marathon, though. Second one, proper old school, the Amsterdam Marathon. Today I ran my masterpiece. That's like a proper retro medal. And then the one from this weekend, Istanbul. The only marathon in the world where you run across continents from Europe to Asia. That was a really good experience. If I would rank them in order, I would say Amsterdam was my favourite run. That was my second favourite and that was my least favourite. Um, I have already booked two more marathons. I think that's it for this year. I've booked one for March, Rome, one for April, Paris. And then I'm looking at maybe Copenhagen, which I think is May. And then Budapest, maybe. Uh, Vienna in Austria. We'll see. I'm going to enter the ballot for Berlin and I'm going to enter the ballot for New York and see how far I get. But that's my medal collection so far from my marathons.